Hey, what's up guys? Eddie here as DJ11 from J8 Music Studios. Today we're continuing our Back to the Basics series focusing on the modulation envelope. We're going to start by analyzing the ADSR parameters, what their function is, and then we're going to continue with some common applications of envelope modulation. Uh, see the time codes in the description below if you want to skip ahead. And if you choose to skip ahead, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button for more featured content from J8 Music Studios. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so following on from our first series of the amplitude envelope, now we're going to look at the modulation envelope. Once again, we're going to look at Serum because of its animation capabilities. So if we have a single tone, here, let's just play this. So single saw wave, nothing really happening with the sound. And this is the amp envelope settings. If you need to learn more about the amplitude envelope, we see a link to a full detailed video in the description. In summing up, the amplitude envelope controls the volume over time of any oscillator. It is the gate that controls how the sound is perceived over time. The modulation envelope is a little different, though it has exactly the same controls. The x-axis is time and the y-axis is amplitude. That amplitude axis does not represent gain of the volume unless you map it to that. So we can map it to the level. So in this case, we are modulating the volume over time, just like the amp envelope. The amp envelope is hardwired, the modulation envelope is not. The parameters of the modulation envelope are generally exactly the same to that of the amplitude envelope. We have the attack, decay, sustain, and release. And in Serum specifically, we have this whole function. If you wanna know what the, each of them do, please see the amplitude videos in the link in the description. Essentially, they dictate how the envelope behaves over time with the attack determining time taken for the envelope to reach its maximum amplitude, the decay determining the amount of time it takes once that maximum amplitude has been reached to reach the envelope's sustained amplitude, and the release determining the amount of time the amplitude of that signal returns to zero once the key has been released. So for a quick demonstration of this in practice, if I wanted to create this sound, To mimic that behavior, let's have a think about these parameters. If I want the attack to start from low and sweep up nice and slowly, that would indicate a longer attack. If I don't want it to stay up high, if I want it to return once the maximum amplitude has been released, that would indicate a very low to the zero sustain, with the time taken to reach zero determined by the decay. And therefore, that would render the release as useless. But let's give that a try. I'm going to map the modulation envelope to the cutoff. And this little blue ring here determines the magnitude of that modulation. So let's have a quick listen to this. That's essentially what I was thinking of. Let's hear what happens if I increase the sustain. You hear how the filter never returns back to its original position that it tends to hover around this location. And you can see that by a light that moves along the blue ring. See how it never returns back to its initial position. That is the function of the sustained and modulation envelope. So what else can we do with this? This is a quick example. Let's just say we wanted to make a quick pluck sound. So we would use something like this. overused motif in trance music. If I listen to the MIDI, that tone would indicate to me that it wants to be a fast, snappy tone, immediate attack, and the filter sweeping down on the sound very quickly to make that pluck or that transient more interesting. So if I have a quick go at that, I would picture the attack to be zero, the sustain to be zero, because I want the filter to start higher and sweep down. 
and the release to be not zero because you get clicks and pops, but short. So let's see how that goes. One thing to keep in mind about these modulation envelopes is the shape of the curve, also known as the modifier. If I decrease the curve to be more concave, it will have a massive impact on how the sound is perceived compared to if I go the opposite way to make it more convex. Let's have a quick listen to that. Sounds very plucky. Whereas in this shape, modulation doesn't even get all the way through the envelope. You have to shorten the decay. That kind of attack shape is very common for these kind of plucky sounds. Uh, also increasing the resonance will give you an interesting transient. That's just the filter behavior, that's nothing else. So that's a quick summation of the modulation envelope. There's no limit to what you can map this to, at least in some synthesizers. This one is very flexible. We can map anything to anything. So envelope two, do absolutely anything. Whatever you're mapping it to, make sure that it sounds good. For example, if we pick a wavetable. Okay, so we could also map it to the wavetable position, for example. Or we could have it set like that, and then we could sidechain that to a macro. It would mean as this macro is down, there is no modulation happening here, but as we increase the macro, all of the modulation. Let's find a bit of wavetable. Okay, so here's a good example. And then you could do something like map the filter to the cutoff. And if we combine that with some delay and some reverb. Maybe a bit of chorus. Okay, so that's a relatively interesting sound very quickly uh, in Serum using the what we've gone through so far, the amp envelope and the modulation envelope. There's no limit to what you can map this to, so the possibilities are endless. But as long as you understand the basic functions of the attack, decay, sustain, release, and whatever bonus parameters are in your synthesizer, like in Serum, the hold function, being that if I increase this, it holds the maximum amplitude of whatever that signal is mapped to. So that sums it up for the modulation envelope. So thanks for watching guys if you made it this far. If you, if you found this information useful, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content coming out of J Music Studios. And if you're looking for some one-on-one -on -one tuition to sharpen up your productions, we can have a free 30 minute consultation to determine what it is you need to take your tracks to the next level and hopefully label ready. Please hit me up at J Music Studios at gmail.com. Link is in the description. Happy music making and I'll see you in the next one.